For 50 years now, media has portrayed couples in a way that is now almost universally accepted as the norm. The common stereotype for this perfect couple is a taller, more muscular man with a smaller, petite woman who changes to meet her man's needs. Together, the image of this male and this female set the standards for the ideal couple. The 1950s marked the beginning of media's influence on American family and culture. Even though in its infancy and only available in black and white, TV broadcasted the stereotype to homes across the nation. One of the decade's most popular sitcoms, I Love Lucy, showed a devoted, hardworking man that went to work every day. They also saw a shorter woman that stayed at home and cleaned. Also during the 1950s, the public was introduced to Elvis. This dark, handsome, and talented king of rock represented the perfect man, and he needed the perfect woman. On the screen, he was always paired with shorter babes in bathing suits that were chosen specifically for their looks. Off the screen, the woman always in his arms was the beautiful petite Priscilla, who wore extremely heavy eye makeup and set records with the height of her hair. However, her hair never made her taller than Elvis. The pop star and his doll set the standards for the term couple for decades to come. Cartoons became popular during the 1960s, including the Flintstones. Fred Flintstone was the big man in the house. He drove to work every day with his best friend Barney, while his skinny wife Wilma was at the home to take care for their daughter Pebbles and clean up after Fred. One of the most popular movies of the 1970s was Grease. The main couple, Sandy and Danny, were played by John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Sandy did not have the right look for Danny, so in the end she changes herself for him and they become that ideal couple. A skinny, sexy lady and the taller star stud. The big screen phenomenon known as Rocky occurred in the 1980s. This inspirational story is about an average guy attaining a dream. But where would he be without his girl? Imagine your reaction to this picture if it showed Adrian carrying Rocky. Weird, right? It's because we are so conditioned to the stereotype of the man being taller and stronger than the woman. In the 1990s, the Disney princesses finally made it to the big stage. You can't touch this. You can't touch this. Was he uh, strong and handsome? Was he big and tall? There's nobody like him. None of the princes in this picture are shorter than their princesses, and none of the princesses are bigger than a size zero. Half of the princesses are being carried in the arms of the princes, another recurring theme. Notice how in every picture the man is taller than the woman. Through time, TV, photo shoots, movies, and other forms of media, an image of the ideal couple has formed. Since the 1950s, the perfect man was tall, muscular, athletic, and successful at work, while the woman was short, petite, and unable to please the man by being herself. This stereotype now has a tight hold on society. Couples meeting this description can be found from high school to senior citizen clubs. Unfortunately, that leaves many people labeled as undesirables simply because they do not fit the stereotype. Wouldn't it be wonderful if couples formed because of personality and life experiences rather than physical attributes? 
Maybe that could be the next stereotype for couples. When in Rome. Hey! Look at you! We're a great looking couple.